Primary School, which is near Ventnor on the Isle of Wight. I arrived here as an NQT and I've been teaching here for two years. Today I'm going to be teaching Year 4. One of the lessons we're going to be covering is negative numbers. I used to teach negative numbers using thermometers and using temperature as the main way of teaching. But I found that the children didn't really understand what negative numbers were. Although they could grasp the concept that it went backwards from zero, they just thought it only applied to um, temperature and negative numbers and being in a cold place, rather than them existing in other contexts as well. Right, one voice saying the wrong thing, and we're going to start exterminating. OK, finger off. <laughs> We're going to count back from 20. 18, 18 16, 14, 14, 12, 10, 10 8, 8, 6, 4, 4 2, 0. 0. Minus. 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 What should it be? Negative, Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative we used to use minus all the time as the main way of describing negative numbers, but it confused the children. They didn't understand that a number minus was something different from taking away. Getting the language of maths precise is central to today's lesson. It's planned around Josie's belief that the children need to understand the fundamental difference between, say, one and negative one before they can go any further. She's using a story about a beach to embed the language of this fundamental concept. I thought, right, that's it. I'm definitely going to count mounds of sand. But again, my eyelids got heavy and I found myself drifting off to sleep. And this time when I woke up, there were the two mounds. But if I looked further down the beach, I could see they'd been building these mounds of sand further down next to other people's towels. So I had how many here? Two mounds of sand. sand and one mound of sand further down the beach. So how many do I have? Let's look at them and count. One, two, three. What do I write? Three. Three mounds of sand. sand. Excellent. Right. Next. This time I saw this. And I thought to myself, where have all the mounds of sand gone? But I thought, I'm still going to count them. So what would I put here? You can call out. What would I put here? Yeah, no, no. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I went back to sleep. And I'll tell you what, it was lucky I didn't hurt myself. When I woke up, there in front of my towel, it wasn't one of you, was it? Somebody had done this. What have they done? Dug a hole. Dug a hole. Dug a hole. So what could I do? I've got one mound of sand missing. Look where the negative sign is sitting. This is negative... One. Just but what's the difference this. between a story of a hole on a beach and the more traditionally used analogies like temperature and bank accounts? Maths advisor Richard Dunn is at the local beach that inspired the story. The important thing to remember is you don't actually need a beach. In fact, we don't need to use thermometers, we don't need to use bank accounts, we don't need to use blocks of flats. But the point about the beach is that digging a hole gives children the impression that a negative number is associated with the absence of something. Jose is explaining this absence of something with cards. She's using specific language to establish the difference between the negative number sign and the act of subtracting. She has the cards on a resources table and a second maths table. Moving cards between the tables helps to visualise addition and subtraction. What were you right seeing this? Everyone tell me. Negative two. Fantastic. What am I going to write next? Add. Are you sure? Are you sure? What am I doing? Everyone tell me. 
Take away. Fantastic. Take away. What would I write now? Minus one. <gasps> oh my goodness, Amelia. Negative one. Negative one. Well done. Excellent. So, look at the maths table and count. What have we got? What will you write? Jacqueline. Negative one. Negative one. Well done. Right. This time when you look at your partner's work, I want you to look and see if they've put the negative symbol in the right place on the number. It shouldn't be where this one is. It should be right at the top. The language is of the utmost importance. This is an object which they're moving between the two tables. As an object, it's a noun. But this, where they get ready to take away, is an imperative verb. This is a noun, as an object. This, look at the math table and count, is an imperative verb. And this, an object, is a noun. What we've done is we concretize this and this and this and this and this so that the pupils can get access to the symbolism of mathematics. When they see this, however, noun, adjective, what sort of three is it? It's a negative three. That's quite different from imperative verb. An action, noun, adjective, imperative verb, noun, adjective. So the important thing is that this must not be confused with this either in the way it's written or in the way it's spoken. This in mathematics is negative. There's no other word for it. You can't call it subtract, you can't call it minus, you can't call it take away. This, however, an imperative verb is take away, minus, subtract, or even difference between. So what we're very careful about is the language of mathematics is accurate, the symbolization of mathematics is accurate, and then the children get access to the very essence of mathematics. Okay boys, how many of you put these into piles of? Two. Um, what do you need to put them in piles of? Three. three. Can you show me putting those into piles of three? One, two, three. Plus that negative three. Negative three. Okay. Across a year, Joseph found it demanding to get all the children to concentrate. So there are lots of elements to today's lesson with changes of pace and opportunities to assess the progress of the children to see who needs more of a helping hand. But now I need to see you working with Brian after you've done this activity. Okay, Reese. Did you see what I did on the board? I had negative two, negative two, and then I took away negative one, and how many did I have left? Look at the maths table, how much is there? Good boy, okay. Need to concentrate, Reese. I found that using this model of maths has really helped the progress of sessions. It seems to capture their interest more, they're more applied. Um, children with behaviour problems or with behaviour issues, um, it, they become more willing to participate in the sessions. I've tried the classroom in a variety of different formats, but it's had such an impact on the behaviour during lessons, having it in rows. They're far more focused. Easy peasy? Very squeezy. Right, you've asked for it. Still time. using the cards for support, Year four's moving on to division with negative numbers. In fact, Katie, would you like to come up and do it for me? My arms are aching a little bit. So how many are you going to need to collect? Six. Good girl. Oh. Show the class the cards that you've picked up. Can you see anything wrong with any of those cards? Scott. They're not negatives. Are any of those cards not negatives? Good girl, well done. Okay, let's count with her. One, One two, Three, four, five, six. Right, and you're going to be looking for piles of negative two. 
One, two, that's a pile of negative two. One, two, that's a pile of negative two. One, two, that's a pile of negative two. So look at the maths table and count the piles. Let me see you doing it on your maths table, please. If you put these into piles of, um, what do you need to put them in piles of? Three. Can you show me putting those into piles of three? Big voices. I can't hear you, Oliver. One, two, three. Three. Good boy. Well done. So, how many piles have you got? Excellent. So, division with the support of piles of cards is going well. But there seems to be some teething problems with multiplication. Number three, negative one. So how many do we start with in our hands? Negative one, what do we need to take? So put that in your hands. And then what's, what are we going to be doing with it? Um, timesing. Timesing. So, so how many times are we moving it? Um, five. Five times. So let's see you doing that. One, two, three, four, five. So how many do we have here? Five. And what would we write down? What would the answer be? Five. Are you sure? Minus five. <gasps> Negative five. Negative five, isn't it? Because that we're counting how many we've got left. We need to start this early, otherwise children don't get into the habit of working in this pretend, symbolic way. The confusion starts with the failure to make a clear distinction between negative and minus, right from the beginning. Minus five. <gasps> uh, negative. negative. Negative five. Good boy, that's better. To make sure you say negative one, and you make sure this is quite distinguished from the minus, which is an action. What am I going to write next? It's one of the things that I've really noticed with this style of maths is that it is across the board. In general, at the end of the lessons, I'm far more confident that more of the children have got the key concepts. One, two, three, four, five.